Oh, I just love that. It, Randy Jones. Randy Jones was Cheryl Rogers' daddy, and that's him playing the piano. Unbelievable. He's passed. He's gone on, and I bet he's tearing it up there with the Lord and all the saints. What a wonderful piano player. Hey, I was in the shower, of course, this morning, and that's where I start thinking about what are we going to do, Lord, when we get out here today? First of all, I want to let you know before I forget, Jimmy Yuri will be live again tonight at 5 p.m., and I haven't heard from Andy Andrews. Is he going live at 12.15? Somebody let me know. But anyway, I'm so glad you're here. Look at you coming in. Vicki Harris, Carolyn Hendricks-Watson. Uh, you're on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. It helps me so much when you subscribe and then ring that bell because I want you to know every morning at 10 when we go live, if you forget, it might remind you. I hope it will. And then if you're on Facebook, uh, share it. Welcome to my backyard, y'all. Share it, share it, share it if you're on Facebook. This is my backyard. I don't get in that pool much, but I do like it. My friends love it. Hey, I, <clears throat> I want to thank you for tuning in. Angela Marshall, Nancy Landrum Underwood, Jackie Morgan Adams, Janet Proctor, Jane Sloan, Gina Green. I'm just going to do first and last names because y'all put every name. Some of y'all have about 12 names. Thank you for tuning in. It's 10. Didn't we have fun last night? Were you? Did you watch Mondays with Mark last night, 7 p.m. Central? Colleen was here, of course, Philip. And then Bill and Renee Morris and Bubba. And we had church. But here's what we're going to do this morning. I picked a, a pretty easy one for us. If you don't know it, you can pick it up real quick. But I think you will. Get your, get your unsweet decaf iced tea because you don't need to be any hyper than you already are. Mm. And in a little bit, I'm going to Skype in uh, Steve Amerson. We had so much fun with him last week. I said, hey, come back on this Tuesday, too, and we'll tell some more stories. I uh, This is a good song, y'all. It's page 418 in the Red Baptist Hymnal, and uh, it goes like this. I got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. You remember that? And then I've got joy. I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river in my soul. Well, I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river in my soul, in my soul. And then, y'all, I thought of another one. I didn't actually think of it. I opened them. You know, I did my morning, okay, Lord. And I hadn't thought of this one. I don't know that I've ever sung this one, but I bet you'll know it. And if you do, sing along. My faith has found a resting place, not in, not in device nor creed. I trust the ever-living one, his wounds shall, for, his wounds for me shall plead. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. My great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed, for me his life 
he gave, I need no other argument, sing it. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Let's see what these other verses say. Enough for me that Jesus saves. This ends my fear and doubt. A sinful soul, I came to him. He'll never cast me out. My heart is leaning on the word, the living word of God. Salvation by my Savior's name, salvation through his blood. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy, what day is this, Tuesday? <clears throat> Tuesday, what is the day? Tuesday, May 5th. It's May 5th. Can you believe it? 2020 is almost over. It's half over. I mean, you think June, well, June 24th is my birthday, and that's almost halfway to Christmas to the day, almost one day off. So I got presents every six months. I timed my birth so that would happen. <laughs> no, I really, I really had nothing to do with that. Um, what else y'all want to do? Let's see what you're talking about. Good morning, Sharon. Griswold. Oh, thank you, Patience Maggotty. Maggotty, is that your name? I like that, Patience. What a beautiful name. Uh, Mark Singh, uh, Paula Shepard wants me to sing one of your mama's songs for Karen McBride. Happy birthday, Karen McBride. Everybody sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Karen McBride. Happy birthday to you and many more. And it is also, what is this? It's not, is it Cinco de Mayo? I thought, no, is it May 5th? Cinco de Mayo, happy, happy Cinco de Mayo. Sorry, I forgot. But thank you for remembering Catherine Pierce. Uh, what else? Great song. It is enough that Jesus... Yes, Cindy Bowman. How are you doing now? I am new to the Christian faith. And, you, and do you have any suggestions? <clears throat> wow, Charlotte Scoggins. Uh, find a good church that believes the Bible and believes in grace, the grace of God. It isn't legalistic or mean... Uh, but loves Jesus and wants to follow him because you really want to be a Jesus follower, not a Baptist, not a Catholic, not a whatever. I mean, you may end up in one of those churches, but you got to follow Jesus and listen to him and let him speak to your heart because you are one of his children and he will, you know his voice and you will recognize it because he said, my sheep know my voice. So listen to that still small voice inside you. And, and read the Bible. Read Matthew. Go get you the Message Bible. It's called the Message Bible. Or you can go to BibleGateway.com and read it for free. You can read all kinds of translations. But like King James, everything from King James to the NIV to the Message Bible to the Living Translation to the Passion Translation. And they're all good. And, uh, but the Message Bible makes it where you can really understand it, I think. And um, then find a good church. I guess that's what I'd do. Anybody else got any suggestions you could give Charlotte Scoggins? Okay, let's see what else. Happy birthday, Heather. Have a blessed day. Kathy Green is telling Heather happy birthday. Happy birthday, Heather. Okay, what else? Oh, let's do this. Where's the other song I wanted to do? I got peace. We've already done that, haven't we? Well, oh, have you got a suggestion? Uh, this ought to be your morning. 
Tuesday mornings ought to be your morning. Taco Tuesday, I saw that go flying by. What a great concert show you had last night. Thank you. Thank you, Linda Kirstein. Is it Kirstein or Kirstein? I love your name. Diane Sample, leaning on, oh, that's a good one. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Well, what a fellowship. What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Sing, leaning, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning. Leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Mike Taylor, your wish is my command. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners <coughs> was slain so I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Well, y'all, I'm going to call my good buddy, Steve Amerson. What a great singer he is. He may end up singing for you a little bit. We never know. And we're going to go over here and see if he joins us. Steve Amerson, answer your phone. Steve Amerson. Well. The person whom you're trying to reach is currently unavailable. Oh. Please leave a message after the... No, we're not leaving a message. I don't know how to leave a message. Oh, there he is. Okay. Is currently unavailable. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey. One second here. Let me turn down my volume on this other thing. Can you hear me? Oh. oh, I can hear you great. You look good. Well, thank you. I put on a shirt with a collar like my maid told me to. <laughs> you know, she told me What's in that broken name? Portuguese, Mark, you know, you have 6,000 people watching you. And I was thinking, well, I got more than that. And she said, <laughs> she said, you need to comb your hair. But she said it in broken English. Took me a long time to forget what she's saying. You need to comb your hair and wear a shirt with a collar on it. And you know what? She has never said anything like that to me before. So I took it to heart. You got mm, a green I screen see. going. Look at there that. You go, bud. Isn't that something? Do you really have a green screen? I wonder yep. if I can. I think I can put, if that's a green screen, I can put the green screen over here. Let me see if that works. No, it doesn't. Oh, well. So, Steve Amerson, how are you on Tuesday? You know what? I'm doing great. Mark, you doing all right? I'm doing great. I'm how was your, sho how was your shower? I, what? How, how was your shower? It was fine. He called me this morning while I was in the shower, and I just texted him back. I, I, I just got out of the shower. I'll call you in a minute. He said, well, don't FaceTime me. And I thought, I never thought to do that. 
Lord, have mercy. I never Lord, I never show my anointed one. Don't you love to laugh? Yes, I do. Well, I do. And my friends are so funny. Did you see Mondays with Mark last night? Bubba McNeely oh, is one of the funniest people in the world. And he I didn't really let him loose. Oh, y'all, the corona diet has got look how this shirt has gotten so tight. Fortunately, <sighs> You know when you when you got man boobs, my man boobs are growing. And also this morning I had to bend over and cut my toenails because my you know I used to go get it done. I believe in pedicures, you know, because I can't lean over, and uh, and I nearly fainted this morning trying to cut my toenails. What you do, you got to just take a lot of little short breaths while you're down there because because. <laughs> Because your stomach is up in your ears at that point when you've been on the Corona diet. And you got to, you know, and I got them cut, thank God. So I'm set for another six months. And you were able to get back up? Yeah, yeah. I was a little lightheaded, but I got back up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Mark, why don't you get in the swimming pool? Oh, I do sometimes. But I don't like, you know, I'm a, I don't like the sun that much. My dad has had skin cancer. Oh. And so it runs in our family. And I and I personally do not like I cannot I have friends who go out there and lie out. Is it lie out or lay out? I don't know. Lie out. They, go, they, they go out in the sun. They lay out in the sun. I think it's lie. They're prostrate. <laughs> I hope I got that one right. Anyway, they're 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 horizontal and they're in the sun and they're baking. They're baking and they love Colleen, Colleen, my co-host on Mondays with Mark. You can play connect the dots on her. She's, <laughs> she has had so many sunspots. I don't know how she doesn't have cancer, but Do thank go God she a, doesn't. Do you go out there with a magic marker and kind of con connect the dots? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark, you know, I've never uh, heard you say uh, you've talked about your mom and talked about your daddy. Tell, tell us about the relationship between your mama and your daddy. Oh my, it was one, it was good. They always supported each other. Uh, no matter what, you know, mama was always right. The <laughs> teachers were always right. Um, I mean, cause daddy was the punisher, you know, he's the one that spanked. But I mean, uh, I, I appreciated that now because, you know, I don't know my, my but they, ha oh, towards the end when, uh, when mama got dementia, yeah, Daddy would sit on the couch and hold her hand. Now I never saw them show a lot of affection, like holding hands or kissing or any of that. But towards the end, I did. You know, he would just mm -hmm. sit and hold her hand. And every day, uh, she had to eventually go to a nursing home. Which, by the way, there are good nursing homes out there. She was in a wonderful nursing home, and they really loved her and took care of her. And she. Uh, what you do, if you, you walk into the nursing home, and if it smells like pee, you walk out. That's not a good one, you know. But if it doesn't, that might be a good one. Check it out. So anyway, we, we, she was there for seven months, and um, uh, he would go every day, you know, drive 17 miles one way to be with her. Uh, they'd sit and hold hands while uh, they watched Gaither videos. So their, their relationship, he misses her to this day. He still wears his wedding ring, you know. Did I they laugh a lot? I to hook him up with people and he's not interested. Did, did they laugh a lot? No, nah, they're pretty serious. Did they know what to do with you? No, and not, <laughs> not usually. <laughs> but they always loved me. They always supported me big time. Oh, big time they supported me. And uh, whatever I wanted to do creatively, they were just thrilled I wasn't shooting anybody. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, it was a word. So t let's talk about what you said you had some talking points, and I like well, some of them. Absolutely. You know what? So, in fact, um, some people don't know just my, my background growing up in Ohio and Indiana. And I mentioned this to you the other day. I remember going to the Cato Tabernacle really in downtown Indianapolis where they would have these all night sings right which was just amazing and that's and also to, be, where B R Lakin preached wasn't it the Cato Tabernacle I, I think so Back yeah in the 40s maybe to, to have heard the stamps oh. and all of these quartets there I mean and the last week somehow you mentioned JD Sumner right and 
Years ago, I was at this music conference in New Mexico uh, called Glorietta. Oh, yeah, I've be- been there. Yeah. And, of course, I, I was kind of too – I didn't know enough, but I, I kind of knew the name J.D. Sumner. And one night we're out on one of the porches there, the dormitories, and J.D.'s sitting there, and I just got to sit there and talk with him. Mm-hmm. And it was just so amazing. Oh, that voice. To- just to share with this man. Oh, which, which makes me think, um, years ago, Christine and I got to know Buck and Dottie Rambo. Right. And Dottie was, um, doing a children's musical and she needed a children's choir to record the thing and sing with her. So I prepared my children's choir and we recorded the video, did the, did the uh, recording. And that's how I got to know Buck and Dottie. And, a couple of years later, uh, they were living in Atlanta at the time, and um, Christine and I were just going through just it was a it was a difficult time in life, uh, just just struggles and so forth. That she and I were fine, but there were things coming at us. And uh, Dottie said, "Get yourself on a plane and fly down here." And so we flew down to Atlanta and stayed at Buck and Dottie's place. Yep. And they just loved on us, yep. encouraged us. Sounds like and I, she she took uh, us up into this one room, and there on this not a mannequin but kind of this whatever model type thing, she had one of Elvis's jumpsuits. Oh wow! <laughs> he he had given her one of his you know sequin sparkly jumpsuits and everything. Is it, it was. It was really kind of amazing. So my roots, my musical roots, even though I've gone a lot of different directions, my musical roots were solid in the church and yeah. and a lot of quartet music. Um, sang quartets when uh, when I was a kid. Uh, you my know, brother J.D. Sumner. One time he told me he said I was going to ride the bus with him, and he told me he said Now we're going to Atlanta because I had the weekend off, so I was going to jump on the bus and ride with him. So he said Now listen, we're going to get to uh, near Atlanta, there is the best steakhouse I've ever eaten at in my life. And I said, he said, don't eat all day long because you're going to want to really chow down on this. So I starved all the way to Atlanta. And we pull up into be- into uh, Western Sizzler. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Western Sizzler? Now, they're good. Well, I've heard of Sizzler. It's like, you know, it's not the best steak you'll ever eat in your life, you know. <laughs> And so, but I didn't say anything. I just went with it and we go in there. And this is when I really learned some wonderful things about old JD. We had this waitress at the Western Sizzler who, um, who talked to, you know, we were carrying on conversation. We talked to everybody, me and JD, we, and, and all his group was there too. But anyway, so we all had eaten and we made friends with this waitress. She's an older woman, probably in her seventies. Finally, uh, the, she was bringing the bill. I remember, it, this is what I remember. The bill was on a tray. JD was reaching for the bill when the conversation went, where I said, how long do you think you'll be, uh, you know, working here? You know, uh, somehow, I don't remember exactly. She said, well, I've got cancer and I'm just trying to work as long as I can to take care of my grandchildren. And when she said cancer, JD used to walk around with a wad of cash that big that thick, which I think it was all record money from the product table. (laughs) But anyway, it was a big old wad of cash. When she said cancer, he dropped that entire wad on her tray. And it blessed her, of course. Well, on the way out, I said, J.D., you have any idea how much money was? He said, it don't matter. And that's the way he was. It just, he was always helping people. Like, um, when Ron Blackwood, and he'll tell you this, when Ron Blackwood got out of prison, it was J.D. Sumner who picked him up and, really? and was waiting for him when he got out. You know, J.D. was, he was, and I asked J.D. one time, because there was another friend of his who got in trouble and was in prison, and I asked him, what did he do? And J.D. said, it doesn't matter. Uh, and he wouldn't tell me, which I loved. I learned a lot from him, how not to gossip. He taught you a lot about grace just by the we way learned he learned grace together because I was reading the grace awakening and I was going over and telling him what I'd learned. And then he would mull it over in his mind and spit it back out in an eighth grade vocabulary. Cause that's as far as he went to school and it would be more brilliant than 
Yeah. Chuck Swindoll had written. I mean, it was, he just could get it. He could pack it down into where you could grab. A, he was great. He was smart. Hey, yeah. uh, let's talk about the time you and I and Paul Johnson. Talk about grace. Well, Paul Johnson invited us to yeah. go to this American Music Awards. Remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was 1988. That was the year? Yeah, because I had just joined the vocal band. It was well, 1988. See, uh, PJ, uh, we, you know, I call him PJ. Um, he had invited a bunch of us to sing in that program. Oh, and my right. wife, you were Christine, singing up there. I was one of the singers. My wife, Christine, was one of the singers. And, you know, ab about Paul Johnson, Mark, when I was in college back in uh, Taylor University, somehow I came across a, a little cassette or cassette. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was it was orange in color. And it was Paul Johnson arrangements. I didn't know who Paul Johnson was, but Paul Johnson arrangements of uh, John W. Peterson songs. Yeah. And I'm listening to these a cappella arrangements. I'm going, this is just, I'm a college student. I'm going, this is just amazing. Right. And a couple years later, Christine and I moved to Los Angeles and I got to meet Paul Johnson. And not did I get to meet him he became a dear friend. And so, yeah, P PJ asked uh, Christina and I to be part of the background singers for this American whatever film awards right. thing. And uh, so we sang. And then after the after the event, I remember we were looking for you. Oh, my goodness. And we're like, where's well, let me Mark? Tell you, let me tell you my perspective of that. I had forgotten you were there, but it's been so long. You know, I, just, I remember this. I remember <laughs> Betty Davis was there. And I remember Betty Davis ate her food with a fork in one hand and a cigarette in the other. I had <laughs> never seen anybody do that. She would eat a little and smoke a little, eat a little, smoke a little. And then all of a sudden, y'all, if we'd had cameras, we I had a, one of those winding cameras. That's how far back this was. And uh, and so I took, a, I was taking pictures. I got one of Lucille Ball. She was there. Uh, uh, Milton Berle and his wife, Ruth. They were there. Uh, I mean, every star, every old star you can think of. And Paul Johnson was leading the orchestra and you were singing. And I was walking around being a germ and taking pictures of everybody. Well, <laughs> all of a sudden I look up and they are carrying. Do you remember this? They carried Betty Davis out like she was a sack of potatoes. She had fainted or something. And they were Several of those waiters were carrying, and one had her had their ha hand on her hat because her hat and wig would have fallen off. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, if I could snap a picture for the National Enquirer. Of course, everything was going in my mind like I saw Betty Davis die. You know, <laughs> Betty Davis eyes. Remember that song? I was thinking, I was rewriting it in my head. I thought she's dead, and and she finally came back. She recouped, recovered, whatever, and did her speech. She left her notes on the podium. Did you know this? No. I ran up and got them. No way. Yep. Still have them. Yep. Oh. And so then afterwards, remember, we were sitting down. Milton Burl and his wife, for three hours, we sat and talked. Do you remember that? All yes. of us. Paul? We couldn't, we couldn't find you. And finally, we find you. And we go... Who's, who's Mark with? <laughs> you were with Milton Burrow holding court. Yeah, we were having a good time. And then y'all joined us. We, we yep. For about three hours, we sat and talked. He told me one of the worst jokes I've ever heard in my life. Because <laughs> I told him I was a Christian comedian. And he said, oh, I got a Christian joke. And it <laughs> was something. <laughs> so oh, we tell Mark. him that one. Hey, everybody. Come on in. Linda M My Sanders. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for laughing, Carol Church. Oh, uh, uh ha, laughing. So, hey, Hannah Gadledge. God bless you, hon. Who else is on? Uh, Betty Davis. <laughs> I love Betty Davis' eyes. That's great, Karen Malt. Yeah, that was a fun night. I mean, Milton Burrow. And did you know that within six months, uh, Ruth Burrow was dead? Hmm. Betty Davis was dead. And Lucille Ball was dead. Did I'll it have anything that. to do with you being there? Huh? Did it have anything to do with you being well, there? Well, I wondered. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't spike their drinks. But I mean, I, I, I just 
thought that's interesting. Boy, they didn't have long to go when I saw them. Yeah. yeah. You know what? You talk about Grace Mark. Years ago, I wrote a song called This Must Be the Place. Yeah. Um, and it was inspired by a book from Philip Yancey mm. entitled What's So Amazing About Grace? Oh, yes. And in the beginning of that book, he tells a story of a, a prostitute that had uh, gotten to such a place that she was selling her own child into prostitution. Oh. And someone from a church approached her and said, well, have you ever considered going to the church for help? And her response was, Yancey tells in the book, oh, yeah. her response was, I already feel so bad about myself. Why would I want to go someplace where they will only make me feel worse? Mm -mm -mm. I remember reading that book. Yeah, and it just, it just makes me think that people, um, those of us who have received God's grace, we can be so critical of other people. Oh, yeah. And um, it's, it's not to be insulting, but it's, it's because they're ignorant. They don't know. Nobody's really shown them God's love and God's grace before. That book does. What's so amazing about grace? That's the name of it, isn't it? Yep. And yep. everybody ought to get that book. What's so amazing about grace by Philip Yancey. But go yeah. ahead. Just to know those stories. But oh, yeah. um, the, the song I'm trying to think, I think the chorus is, this must be a place where broken hearts can mend. This must be a place where the outcast finds a friend, for we cannot lift the fallen if our hand still holds a stone. Mm. And, their, and their sin that seems so great to us is no greater than our own. Oh, yes. There must be a point where shame meets grace, and this must be the place. I love that. Sing so, I love it. This must be a place where a broken heart can mend. This must be a place where the outcast finds a friend. For we cannot lift the fallen if our hand still holds a stone. And their sin that seems so great to us is no greater than our own. There must be a point where shame meets grace. And this must be the play. Oh, my, that's wonderful. Love yeah. that. Well, I, I love singing that song. And just reminding uh, people of faith that, um, you know, we've, we've been given God's grace, and yet we see somebody that we don't like what they do or what they say or whatever, and we can be really critical about those people. Mm. And we don't realize that th we're not going to beat people into heaven no. by being that. Yeah, I've often said a baby's never been argued out of the womb. You know, you gotta let you've gotta let people develop. You gotta let the Holy Spirit woo them. You've gotta be yep. there to be the midwife yep. and grab them on the way out. Yeah, but absolutely. I love yeah, I love that song. What other books like Philip Yancey's book has uh, impacted you? Well, you mentioned Chuck Swindoll. Chuck Swindoll, uh, you know, all of his writings are right. so pra so practical. Um, I love that. I've got one of his books right here on my shelf. It's a, it's about David. He's written all these books about different biblical characters. I remember one time I was having a chat with, with Chuck, and I was really frustrated about some things. And uh, we were together, and I said, Chuck, I'm ticked at God. And he said, it's okay. He can handle it. Right. And that was such kind of a release right. to me. Um, That's, God's big. He's got it. Oh yeah. You're, you know, I go read, um, uh, 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 Joan in the whale story. You mm -hmm. know, it's only four chapters. Uh, oh my goodness. I read it in the message and I wept because here is Jonah. He is, uh, God has said, now go to Nineveh. He doesn't do it. And then finally he goes through the belly of the whale and all that. And finally he does do it. And, and he's all upset because they repented. <laughs> You know, they had 120,000 saved. He should have put it in his brochure, but he's ticked off. He's mad because they repented. And he starts to tell God, oh, my goodness. He said, I knew you were too good to be true. I knew you would forgive. You know, he goes on and says all the things about God that I love. 
But mm-hmm. he's mad. I knew you were gonna. He wanted God to kill him. And yet God still used him. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. God only yeah. uses jackasses. Remember in the Bible when uh, uh, that donkey talked to the prophet? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's all God's got to work with. Bunch Absolutely. of freaks, frauds, and failures. And I <laughs> love the fact that on our best days, we still fall short. But I love that he chewed God out and God didn't kill him. Mm-hmm. He turned his he turned and on his heels and walked away from God and God let him do it. And then God watched him and put a shade tree over him. And then he thought, hey, watch this, angels. This will be fun. Then he kills the shade tree and watches him get ticked off again. It's kind of humorous, I think. But um, anyway, I love the fact that grace is really amazing. And the more you get into grace, the more you dive into it, seeing grace in that story in the Old Testament Mm -hmm. where God didn't kill Jonah. I mean, I'd have killed Jonah if he talked to me like that, if I'd been God. (laughs) In fact, I'd kill half everybody, probably. (laughs) But not God. Thank God. God is love. And and you know what? A lot of people think that's wishy-washy, but the Bible says so. Mm -hmm. God is love. And anyone who loves is born of God. You know, the Bible says that. Wherever you find love, you'll find God. Well, and our focus should be on two things. Loving God. And loving each other. And loving each other. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I don't know if all this is true, y'all. I'm just spouting stuff out. Y'all need to check it out, make sure I'm <laughs> telling the truth. Go read the book of Jonah today in the Message Bible. And when he gets to chewing God out, tell me if that isn't the most beautiful thing you've ever read about God. He hey. really tells the truth about God, that God is full of mercy and kindness and grace and compassion. And his arms are always wide open, waiting for you to just turn and look his direction. Mm-hmm. Yes, he yeah. is. Hey, hey, Mark, after we talked last week, I did some, I was looking on my shelves and I found some books that I, I want to know if people out there remember these books. Oh, I my- wish I had those. My mama had these these favorites books. I, with, with I Googled all. those. You mentioned those, didn't you, last oh, week? Gosh. Yeah, and here, here's a song out of This Is Favorites Number, Volume 2. All right. And my mom and daddy used to sing this song. They'd sing, you ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say, my sins are gone. Do you know the chorus? There underneath the blood of the Christ of Calvary Has far removed his darknesses from dawn In the sea of God's forgetfulness That's good enough for me Praise God My sins are gone My gosh, I hadn't thought of that one in years Isn't that a great one? Thank you, Lord, for this part of my memory that still works (laughs) And, And then here in favorites too. Also, oh, let's do another one. one. Um, do you remember the course? Calvary covers it all. My past with its sin and stain, my guilt and despair, Jesus took on him there, and Calvary oh. covers it all. Yes, yes, I mean, yes, it just, does too. Great. Boy, the hey, theology in those songs. Man, Mark, it's just great stuff. It's it's great lyric. I remember, um, did you ever get to know Ron Harris, songwriter oh, Mark yes, Harris? real well, very well. Yeah, because uh, Ron wrote uh, for Sandy, he wrote that song, uh, They Could Not. Yes, and he also wrote for Evie, I'm only four foot eleven, but I'm going to heaven. That makes me feel ten feet tall. Remember that? <laughs> Yeah, and he wrote um, uh, in this very room. Right. In this, but anyway, I remember one hearing Mark, uh, hearing Ron Harris talk one day about songwriting, mm-hmm. and he said when you write a lyric, according to him, it needs to be like you could almost diagram the lyric, where there's you know there's a noun and there's a verb and a sub, you know there's all these parts that it's it's that well constructed, not just a bunch of words that rhyme. 
And so whenever I think about great songwriting, I'm thinking and, and lyrics that have been crafted well, l- like these, I'm, I'm always looking for things that that make uh, uh, grammatical we'll find sense. Another one. Okay, hey, which which Baptist hymnal do you use? Well, I know the you're, one I ordered off the internet. That must be like called a, the Baptist hymnal. Well, yeah, but see, there's and it's lots by of Convention Baptist Press hymnal. in Nashville, Tennessee. But I don't know. See, because there, there's 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 this one, and this was two thousand and two thousand eight. I need this. And, Let me see what year this one is. 1991, this one's old. Oh, my good, yeah. But you and know then what? There's... That doesn't matter. The songs well, are still in there, and they're still good, and they're still like they... I'll no, tell you, I love them. No, it's not like the 1956 Baptist. Myra Turner. K. Reese wants to hear this right now. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Do you know the verse? There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. I love him too. Hey, listen, uh, I want to say, uh, our choir, listen to this. John McDaniel is trying to tell me our choir at Freeway Baptist in Houston use the favorites and Singspiration books. Do they still use them? If anybody knows of a church in Houston that you uses, I hear some static, but uses the old hymns for their worship service, put it in the comments and I'll see you Sunday. <laughs> well, I'm yeah, ready. Yeah. You got a social distance, though, Mark. Oh, well, whenever we can see you, I'll see you. Hey, are you doing okay on supplies, everything oh, you, you need there for your my home? My harem You're- is keeping me so fed. You know, can you Colleen, a- Dina, uh, Shelly, Deborah, those four are cooking here every night. Really? Huh? That's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's been the best blessing for me. Are you good on paper goods? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, well you know, uh, except toilet paper, because the roll was called up yonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my toilet paper gone. When the trumpet of the Lord's down. Oh, uh, no, that was a joke. We planned that. Can you believe we actually, I got to tell him, we planned that joke. He called me yesterday or whenever it was just laughing about that joke. He said, we got to use it. We got to use it. So we do. Oh. Yeah. Are you out of toilet paper? Yeah, the roll was called up yonder. <laughs> <laughs> you are the best laugher. I love good laughers. Oh, well, y'all, what? Well, what else can we talk about? Or anything y'all want to talk? I love songs from the hymn. I do too, Penny Driscoll Doyle. Doyle. Is that your name? There's a good restaurant in Houston called Doyle's that went out of business just now. I hate it when my favorite restaurants. Like a meet and three. Do you love a meet and three? Do you know mm-hmm. what a meet and three yeah. is? Yeah. Absolutely. Do y'all have those out there in California? No, we don't have them here. But when I get back into Nashville, I go. Uh, last time I went with my friend Bill Schnee, and uh, who's a great engineer, and we we went over to a meet and three. I forget over on No, it, what? I mean, if you were to walk in this place, you'd think they just set up shop that morning. I forget the name it of the could place. Be Arnold's. Well, most oh, meat and threes. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, you get a meat and three vegetables, and we, and there's short, back in the south they're just called a meat and three, and I love them. There used to be one here called Triple A, ca, uh, Triple A Cafeteria or whatever. Not cafeteria. It wasn't a cafeteria. It was a yeah, I guess Triple A. We just called Triple A, and it was so good. Tell you what, the days of those uh, buffets and cafeterias may be over they for a while. Well, what they're doing, they're putting plexiglass everywhere, you know. And then the people, I think in the, like, Cleburne Cafeteria, which is everybody knows, watches me, knows I love that cafeteria. It's the best cafeteria, not only in Houston, but in the world. 
because you know I've eaten it all of them. No, but it is. It's amazing. Well, they're putting plastic, excuse me, uh, plexiglass up. And so anyway, I don't know why we're talking about that. Hey, you know what? You But we're talking about food. I think I know your favorite snack. What? I've been told your favorite snack is pickled beets and Ritz crackers. Well, one, how did you know that? How did you know that? I can't tell you. Well, that's I, one of them. I got, I got friends with the CIA. Pickled beets. You put a pickled beet on a Ritz cracker <laughs> and it changes everything. It changes you think, your life? You think the Ritz cracker is bitter. It's not. I mean, I'm sorry. You think a beet is bitter, pickled beet. If you think that, you're wrong. Put it on a Ritz cracker and it becomes sweet. I don't understand it. But you know what my favorite snack is right now? What? Animal crackers. I love animal crackers. I don't know why, but I do. Oh, my. All right, y'all. Well, y'all. Hey, 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 let's sing one last song before, before oh, we let's go. Let's do. Oh, we were going to do Peace, yeah. Peace. Wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love. What a great song. Bye, everybody. I will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thank you for meeting me here every day. I want to tell you, it blesses me as much as I hope you're being blessed. From the comments I read, it sounds like y'all are enjoying these little visits. But I do want to check up on you and make sure you're okay. And there are prayer warriors that read over these comments and will pray for your needs. So don't be afraid to put your prayer requests on here, too. God bless you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mark. Bye -bye. Good to see you, bud. Good to see you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.